scientists has just confirmed a massive rupture breaking apart underneath the Atlantic Ocean. One capable of setting off powerful earthquakes and even triggering tsunamis. And while the public is just learning about this, the military has already been preparing starting September for naval base upgrades against earthquakes and tsunamis, spending billions of dollars preparing to enhance their survivability, not just on the West Coast, on the East Coast, with Norfolk, Virginia and Kittery, Maine. As this risk grows, scientists off the coast of Massachusetts on Cape Cod where a tsunami arose years ago, are now drilling underneath there to try to find some type of secret water below. So what does this massive rupture in the Atlantic Ocean mean for millions on the US East Coast and Canada in Hampton Roads, Virginia, close to the coastlines, eyewitness footage came out of something happening right in front of the neighbor's front door that a bunch of residents heard that officials can't explain. So a lot of residents reported this boom and shaking, and this is an area right close to the Norfolk, Virginia military base who's getting ready for this earthquake resilience. It sounded like someone had crashed into a vehicle out here. What you're about to hear next makes this more concerning since we have this rupture growing in the Atlantic. That rattled homes across Virginia Beach and beyond tonight. We're told the Virginia Beach Fire Department says they received no calls about a possible explosion. And the U.S. Geological Survey reported no earthquakes in the area. Officials at Naval Air Station Oceana say training flights follow FAA rules and cannot break the sound barrier over land. But weather conditions can sometimes carry offshore activity further inland. If this rupture is happening, we have to watch this really closely because some of the boom activity, if it's offshore, is telling us what's happening in the ocean. And to deepen the situation, I got a text just today who does investigative work and he's hearing booms shaking his house just today so this isn't just an isolated event to virginia we're gonna keep watching this along the east coast and what's happening in the middle of the atlantic for the first time a group of european researchers led by the university of lisbon went out and they found the lower part of the lithosphere in the atlantic ocean is sinking this means the atlantic ocean geological decline has begun. This means that it's going to be more tsunami risk and seismic zone risk over there. But let's look at the mid Atlantic Ridge. Look at this. You see how his, the arrows are pointing apart because it's widening. A geological widening is happening to this specific area. And this area is going to become a new subduction zone. So let's, let's take you into the risk right now of what's happening. So if you look at this map, you can see all the earthquakes that hit along this area. This is an area that's already ruptured, already under stress, but there's more to this. So now we get to the big question. Now let's go a little bit closer to the East Coastline. Look here, you wanna know why the military in Norfolk, Virginia is really preparing? Look at this map. Norfolk, Virginia, has landslide underwater events that could happen that trigger tsunamis. Also, you got Baltimore Canyon that could trigger tsunami. So look, we're watching between Norfolk Canyon, we're watching between Baltimore Canyon and Hudson Canyon. This is off the coast of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. It's the continental shelf is right there. These are your risk zones, which used to be low, uh, but since the activity in the Atlantic is changing, we need to watch this. Just stop a second, do yourself a favor and hit subscribe because we're going to be looking deeper into this and we got to go deeper right now to get your information that's even more important. So we go a little bit higher up on the East Coast. Why at Cape Cod are they drilling in a spot where we've seen a tsunami happen before? It wasn't super huge, but 
aggravating the seafloor is something that we need to stay away from right now. Of mines isn't here right to there. drill for right oil. There, like, that's the drill. That's the drill right there. These researchers are searching for fresh water in a place you would never expect it by plunging what you could call the world's most complicated drinking straw 200 feet beneath the platform and salt water. How far down did your straw go? Right now, our straw is 280 meters below the seafloor, and ultimately, we're going to be doing tests to pump some of that water up and understand how easy it is or hard it is to get out of the ground. So we just put a hole in the ocean off the coast of Cape Cod, which is by Massachusetts, and we're going to keep monitoring this area to see what activity starts to peak up. All because some secret water, oceans beneath the ocean. The question is, why is getting this water that important? There must be something deeper to this, which we're going to unravel in other videos. And so I found out that there is a risk zone uh, close to Newfoundland. And if we look at this map here, it happened in 1929. You can see where the epicenter hit near Charlottetown and Halifax, through Quebec, Montreal, and went to Boston all the way to New York. So that's the Massachusetts area. Uh, and then here's photographs of tsunami deposits by Newfoundland Southern Coast. So this is registered like as far as South Carolina. And that's interesting because just recently you had the South Carolina officials saying, hey, you know, earthquakes are normal, but you need to get prepared, get your preparedness together and get ready. Telling residents stuff like that as the military and everybody else amps up their response plan. And just like how we're monitoring off the coast where we said it could be landslide events underwater, this is one of those tsunami landslide event zones. So we study history because history repeats itself. And if the cycle's right now repeating itself, we just want you to be aware of that because it's so important that you see the cycles that can't be changed. And in these scenarios, it's kind of like, you know, get to higher ground instead of just totally trying to evacuate uh, like what's coming from the Atlantic area, that rupture, that type of scenario is like waves coming for a long distance. And it has to be very significant for it to even become big. So in reality, it's not going to be huge. It could cause a significant amount of flooding. And that just made me have a flashback of Hurricane Katrina. But the landslide ones right off that coastline area is the more uh, focused ones we should be looking at. So notice how when after the big quake happened from Russia, they came out in Norfolk, Virginia, right next to where the military is, most of this earthquake preparedness at, and came on public news and said this. And following that tsunami on the other side of the world, here in Hampton Roads, with so much coastline in our region, we are looking into the chances of a tsunami in our area. 80% of tsunamis happen in the Pacific, but that it's not impossible we'd see one here. We could technically get a tsunami from a landslide. Even a slim chance is enough reason for the city of Norfolk to be prepared. The city of Norfolk has a tsunami plan. It means having a way to alert our citizens in case a tsunami were to occur, which is a very low probability event. If the earthquake alert systems were prompted out right away, it wouldn't be an issue for everybody. But the problem is that some of them don't go out and they've had issues in the past that people are concerned with. That's why communities like this exist. But also on the other side of that, Officially, we don't even know what the booms are that is up, reportedly offshore. And if we can't get information about that, uh, it just kind of concerns the whole factor of this communication. I thought it was just somebody banging at the front door. The dogs were going nuts and uh, they headed to the front door. And that's about it. I didn't get up to go look. I just figured the rest of the family had gone out and they were going to tell me what happened. But that was it. Five, six, we'll say six seconds. Some residents have taken to social media, saying they believe what happened this evening may have been an earthquake. Resident Chuck Haley says he remembers the 2011 mineral earthquake, but says the boom from this evening was nothing like that. Yeah, that was definitely, I mean, I felt that one. I saw the uh, high tension wires shake and things like that. Uh, but this was nothing like that. It was much more mild, about a third the length and not near as intense. We're going to find out more geologically what's happening there, but we need to go into this right now. And I didn't mention this to you about this rupture, but you need to listen to this. Big earthquakes are going to happen again. Duarte said, warning that the impacts of these 
could devastate unprepared coastal regions across the Atlantic. With this massive rupture in the Atlantic, the study suggests that we're going to see the birth of a new subduction zone. But not only that, and he says one that eventually could pull Africa, Europe, and America back together as a future supercontinent. So right now it's like pulling away, but eventually it's going to start pulling things in. And this is down, down the line further. The more immediate thing is the coastal danger, but pulling stuff down in sounds like the ocean like is sinking in. It is though, because we just told you how it was dripping down. And so meaning that like, it's too big of a shift to even like kind of comprehend at this point to see where we're actually going. So if you think that this rupture off the East Coast and the military preparing all these things together with officials having executive orders prepared for subduction zones is the final piece. I found even more critical information that you need to see. Stick around. I'm gathering information right now and you can help me do that by commenting below exactly what you are seeing in your area. And I'm not begging you to watch it. I'm simply saying for survivability, you need to see this Cascadia subduction zone video that nobody has.